Hello everyone and welcome back to It's Not What You Do With It That Counts. We are here playing Bar. Last time I just played up against a simple AI. This time I am going to go up against two AIs, both simple, by myself. This is just to kind of show you how this game works. We're going to make it a little bit simpler on me since it is going to be a two verse one. I'm going to make a little bit of a bigger map on this. Um, we're going to see here. Let's see, which one do I want? The Great Divide is way too small for this. I mean, even there, it says one versus one. That's it. It does say team, but it's a very small map for what I'm about to do. Hmm, let's see. Quarry sounds fun. Ragnarok looks interesting. Let's do something with water, though. Like, a lot of water. That's a small one. Iron I oh there is a lot that I haven't downloaded. Wow. Okay, um there's one. Let's go with this one. It's gonna have to download, but that won't take Yeah, apparently download failed. Okay, so I can't actually use that map. I'll have to figure out why it failed later. These things are pretty good usually. So, since we can't use the ring at all, I mean, we could use Pentos. That actually sounds fun. Having five spots to start. They are on. You know what? We're going to add a team. It's going to be a free for all with just simple AI, simple AI, and me. But we're all on separate teams. So we're going to have to add another. player position starting location so I'm gonna start there they're gonna start there and we're gonna add another one that we're gonna drag down because it's an odd number no nope, we're gonna let them start right there yep so this is gonna be interesting uh, change their faction to random okay and also their faction to random you know what let's change my faction to random let's see if that does anything it'd be interesting actually I haven't tried this yet I played this game quite a bit in fact coming up there will be a few things where we're gonna go through all the scenarios um, However, we're also going to go up against the Raptors and the Barbarians, which are two AIs that punish you. The Raptors are also known as chickens, and they kind of like the Zerg Rush, but it's just a wave after wave of them that just come after you. 
Okay, it doesn't actually change my ability to start out as whatever team I want. You know what? Let's go with Cortex this time. I'm going to start right there. And we're going to place metal extractors in those locations. And then our wind speed will not beat the uh, these things. Do I go straight for hovers? Yes, I do. Okay, let's start this out and let's see what happens. Oh boy, I just messed that up. Hardcore, I don't know what happened there. Oh well, this allows me to multi-select, kind of. I just messed that up, that's okay. So these two areas here will be dominated by my opponents soon. Which is a little bit scary. But I think we'll build the uh, water stuff over there. Because once I have my hover platform, that is going to be my new building. Um, construction bots. That's what I'll use for construction bots as my hovers. They're a little bit slower, but they are versatile on land and sea, so it kind of makes a little sense if you look at the map. But once I have my shipyard constructed, that makes it so that uh, I won't even need pretty much to build on or to have any defenses on this place to a point. Um, the defenses on this place will have to just be like lasers and, and small things. I won't actually have to have bots roaming around, so I could actually just build the, my entire base on this and leave it at that. Um, yeah, so once it builds, it will tell me what hovercrafts are useful for. You can now build hovercraft. They are specifically good at ambushing from unexpected angles. However, their medium armor will not endure in heavy combat. And as you can tell, they are... I mean, they are quite inexpensive for resources-wise. Um, the nice thing is they do go across land and sea, so them having to patrol like that just kind of works for me and of course because I'm building more than my metal is allowing me to do it's going to take priority onto the commander because of this I however can turn priority onto whatever I want so if they share priority um, they will actually share priority so it will s divide it by however much I have over time but as you can see these guys are as I said fairly inexpensive to build so we already have one patrolling and I've started building more metal makers, otherwise I'm gonna run out of metal. Go figure. Actually, no, you know what? You are just gonna build a bunch of these a minute. And then you're gonna go build this. The shipyards take quite a bit of uh, resources to actually use and make. Okay, so as you can tell, I have two metal extractors there, three here, 
and these two will be operational soon. Um, the only reason I'm building four more solar panels is so I don't run out of energy before he builds these six. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to priority. As you can see, it's going to flick over in a minute once it There you go. Yeah, you can see that this all of a sudden now starts to actually have a timer on it instead of those question marks above it, which means that the priority of this thing has flicked on. Uh, and it will now build equal to this one. This guy here, however, oh, no, nope, everything has priority. Oh, I'm hearing gunfire. I'm hearing gunfire somewhere over here, which means something over here is getting attacked, and I am okay with this. Which means, well, do I'm 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 okay with it, kind of. You know what? I won't need anti-air right away. Let's just build our small amounts of tanks. So yeah, once he's done these solar panels, I shouldn't run out of energy. Before that, because of this, I will run out of energy. Oh no. Oh, you can see there's buildings being blown up, fires starting, and this is all... Yep. Somebody's getting destroyed. These guys have taken upon themselves to start hitting these guys hard. And I'm just out of the coloration of these buildings here. It is, can you dig it? 84 is being annihilated. You can now produce naval units. The heaviest unit class, generally with the strongest armor and longest weapon range. However, constructing ships is costly and submarines and torpedo aircraft can quickly devastate a large naval fleet. So you heard that. Um, they cost a lot to construct. I am going to set these to a priority though. Boats in this one are a little more useful than pretty much 99% of everything else. Um, An enemy man. commander has died. Oh, there goes one of them. None. Yep. He was somewhere over here. Now it's a smoldering ruin. But that also means these guys are probably taking over all of that. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start branching out a little bit. Nah. No. Yeah, maybe. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to build that. So, all of these boats are going to patrol the waters kind of around my position, like that. And I'm going to repeat this with fast corvettes because I'm going to need these destroyers because they have actual sonar and can hit underneath and assault frigates. You know what, we'll do every once in a while, we'll do those and those. Yeah. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to build uh, tidal generators in the corner of the map over here. And that's going to be my energy reserve. Once I'm done building the vehicle plant, <laughs> oh, I'm running out of metal quickly. Okay, once I'm done that, I'm gonna suck up everything in that area to do with everything energy or metal wise. That may or may not help me. So as you can see, I have a boat already circulating, which means that I can take these hovers. How much you want to bet they've built out to here already, now that they've destroyed this? Oh, 
Oh, they're right here already. Wow. They are close. They are very close. Okay, that's not good news for me. Okay, I'm gonna need something better, such as, oh, I don't know, radar. I don't mind the fact that I have the ability to defend myself, unlike the other, my other opponent. It didn't look like he was defending himself too much from how fast he was destroyed. So I'm just hoping that I can make these guys back off. It's not looking like they're backing off, it just looks like they're getting in better position. No, we'll see about that. Medium plasma artillery. You know what? Just in case that we get aircraft hitting us. Which would be bad. That would be a bad sign. I'm just automatically going to try to get to tier 2. Once I'm at tier 2, then I'll have the ability to uh, increase my um, amphibious construction vehicle. That is kind of cool. Now, if I get to tier two, then I will be able to increase my pop my production of metal by a lot. I mean, I'm not doing bad holding them back, so that's a good sign. That's healthy. Oh, that is an extremely heavy tank. That has gotten direct hits from my bigger hover tanks. Now comes my small hover tanks who finally are able to shoot at it. Now, do these guys even stop, though? Oh yeah, they stop. Good. So they can distract it. Okay, they need... No. It is better for me if I start just sucking up... Actually, let's go suck up the carcasses of... Uh... As you can tell, he's not in range. Uh, that red circle is their range. Um, when they get close enough, the boats and everything else will stop and then fire. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna suck up all the metal that I can. So that I can continue building lots of pretty much everything. Because the more metal I get, the faster I'll be able to build, well, this. The Vehicle Lab Tier 2. But I just have to worry about the enemies. Uh, well, no, I guess I don't have to worry about it because once I do that, it'll stop and I can blow it up. I don't care about that. Let's go here and suck up all these metals. As long as I can keep this guy alive. Oh, they have heavy artillery. I mean, I do have a destroyer, so that's that's helpful. We're just going to take the destroyer over here and start hitting the big things. The destroyer, as you say, is fairly capable to deal with uh, heavier mechs, seeing as it is a heavier 
platform. Well, let's get him back. I don't want him dying. There we go. And because of the radar, as you can tell where the green circle goes, I can start seeing things. They will just come up as circles of. But you can tell that this is the only area where I can actually see them. I can't see if they're coming over here or over here. Because rocks do actually block radar's um, abilities. So once this is done, it's going to make this go a little bit faster as long as I give this priority. If I give it priority, it, does, it, it sounds dumb to do, but then I get more hovercraft. And at this point in time, the only way to win this area is for me to flood it with just small units. The boats will come. They'll help out, but... There's not much that can be done anyway with them, so. I mean, that destroyer can just sit there. I'm not going to re-patrol it. Not right now, anyway. So most of the time this is how my matches go against the AI computer, I just castle and then steamroll. Or nuke, because that's a thing I can do later. I can build atomic weapons and just blow them up. Or heavy energy weapons, which is actually one of my favorite ways of ending the game. No, they have pawns. We'll see what happens there, since there is there. Okay. We need a bunch of time for that, but let's make a geothermal vent energy producer. It'll help. Because then I could also make uh, metal. Makers, not extractors, but actual metal makers. Oh, and yes, friendly fire is a thing in this game, so if you all of a sudden decide that you just want heavy, heavy uh, bombardment of missiles, and you need line of sight though first, uh, these type of missiles, if they strike your own units, will destroy your own units as well. It's kind of cool. Makes you really think before you place things out. Just kind of what you want to sacrifice, or if you want to sacrifice anything. Okay, so now that you're done, you're gonna go and build me some anti-air. And now I need that. Once I have that, I will be much better off. Okay, so let's decrease the number of those and increase the number of these and these. Since they are the ones doing most of the damage. Okay, also. As you can tell, this thing just switched to here. 
However, I can force it to stay with this no matter what. Which is what I'm doing. Because I need as many of the hovercraft out as I can. Okay. Come on out. There we go. So, since this thing's out, and I do have, uh, ooh, that's, uh, I don't know if that's a surplus of power, but we'll build a metal extractor over there. coming with a whistler which is a missile tank and I hope I can hit him at least once before anything blows up on my side oh wow that's a lot of crocodile shots oh I see it's also an assault frigate that helps that really does help that all my boats are doing a spin around he Good. So once this is done, he's going to upgrade this called a Mohome, a metal extractor, to something called an advanced metal extractor. It's what we, who played Total Annihilation before, used to call Moho Mines. And it looks like up here I'm okay. It, it's, it's, the main assault is coming from down here, and I think that's because their main base is right here, so it's just faster for them to send this way instead of looping around and coming in. Okay, once this is built, I won't actually be building... There we go. It's up and running. Now I have 953 energy for every 500. Yeah, I'm using way less than I have to. However, saying that, let's go advance this. Aircraft spotted. Aircraft spotted, great. Okay, let's start humping these out a minute. Come on, finish that metal extractor. That is a lob. Ooh, what's this? Oh, it's a hover tank. They're building hover tanks too. Oh, that's cute. But see, they were trying to stop the lobs or stop one of my vehicles so they could lob onto it. Okay, so this one gives me 8.2. Which means this one's gonna give me approximately 8.2. So everyone that I upgrade will give me quite a bit of metal. And does, it does use up. Yeah, it uses up a lot. Still worth it by a long shot. So, if I just build a bunch of artillery tanks and set them there, what I'm going to do is I'll just load up here with artillery tanks in a bit. And artillery tanks can take however long they please because I'm getting rid of priority on that. Okay, so one aircraft, anti aircraft. Let's put the second one over there. And pairing them up like this works really well if uh, all you're doing is upgrading stuff pretty much. Um, so fusion reactors or advanced fusion reactors produce a lot of energy. 
Now what I generally do. Is set like four of these, so I have four thousand energy. Because that's not going to be enough. Trust me. However, now what I could do is I can start building advanced ships, also known as Tech Two ships. Which, if you think about how well these Tech One ships are doing against uh, T Two unit them, detected, it's going to get a lot worse. Okay, so he's got a sprinter, a fast, rapid assault, at which they are fast. However, pretty sure I can take him. I say that, losing ground by launching my most of my military force up here. So once my military force comes down, I should be able to just start coming through. There they come. Yeah. Incoming plane, but they're there it's gonna it's gonna go away pretty quick here. I have a few anti-aircraft things, as you can tell. My military actually is slightly larger than theirs. Which is a necessary thing. So once these two are done building this anti-air, we are going to set these guys into building. Um, these. Uh, as you can see, the range on these are ridiculous. The nice part is you can set these things to fire however you want. And once they're set to fire, They just keep firing in that same location. So if you have like three of these, you can also set their trajectory from low or straight accurate to high or bombardment. And uh, since they're a little bit higher than this, um, but this one's behind like a wall, I can set it to bombardment and bombard over here and be perfectly fine with it. So since this thing has 110 build power, I'm just going to do this to upgrade my base 100%. This thing has 125 build power. Build power just means how much it's going to use up. 250, this guy has three. What is it? 300 build power. Hmm, trying to wrap around the backside of my base. That's no good. Okay, so they are coming in with Alan Centurions. Oh, I mean, it makes us a little light. But this one and this one are tier 2 techs. I know that for a fact. Which also means they're going to be hard, more difficult to destroy. But once I do destroy them, much, much more satisfying. Yeah. And that is a tier 1 construction bot. Or vehicles are. Which is odd that it's right there. I guess not too odd, since they are trying to expand. So one thing about these AIs, they will try everything in their power to expand as much as they can. Which, 100%, I don't blame them. But I will start to have to deal with. Which is where these come in. There you go. I dealt with one. Okay, 
So now they are starting to build the fusion reactors, so I'm just gonna walk away with those two so that my metal stops going down so much. And now the production on pretty much everything on mine is just gonna go way up. Because all of these metal makers are, or metal extractors are, large. something called a sharpshooter those things have the ability to just snipe anything pretty much that is tier one in one shot and they are very scary well if i just repeat that process i almost had this done i am using up way more than i should Build a few battleships. We're just gonna patrol. No, no, no. We're just gonna patrol like that. And I'm so glad I bought or I made those anti-air defenses. As you can tell, they are getting, I wouldn't say desperate, but they are getting very, very close to me, with a lot of weaponry. I'm just gonna go scout with these three and destroy as much as possible in the way of bases. Because I know they've been starting to build everywhere. So, as you can tell, I'm just gonna go around pretty much destroying what I can. I probably should have brought a anti-air with me. These guys can't actually hit the air units. Um, it's not a bad idea. There's a little anti air boat. Or hovercraft, even. I can bring a hovercraft. Let's go bring the anti air hovercraft. Yes, one anti-air hovercraft will do. I mean... We're gonna try push through a huge line. And there goes my anti-aircraft hovercraft, which is gonna be a little detrimental. But not as much as if I... Oh, he, wait, he's still alive. I'm actually surprised. There he goes. If I can kind of get down, if I can blow up some of their stuff at their main base, I'll be happy. Oh, they got turrets up here, which means they probably got bases up here. I have one of these big guys left, because that guy just sank and he just kept on moving. When they say these the, the boats are the toughest class, they weren't joking. That that turret usually takes out quite a few. Um, okay, so now I'm just gonna put these guys all here. And as you can hear, this thing's firing off as well. See, there it goes. 
and he's trying to hit something over there. You know what? Let's start building other things as well. One of each, why not? Okay, so since I have a fusion reactor, I have way more metal than I probably gonna ever need. Or energy, sorry. Not metal yet. Metal is still to come. So what I can do though is surplus a little bit of my metal right now with some metal makers. And as you can tell, if I just have these here plus these two, it's just a massive bombardment against them. So now let's build this right here. these two over here and see what they can do. I mean, just look at the amount of shots ringing out towards this area. Yep. That's quite nice to look at, actually. Because they can't get past this line, it looks like, which is good. Kind of what I'm wanting. Okay, so now that this has been done, I am making more metal because of these. I could probably make another six of these. Okay, so this is a lightning tank. Actually, you know what? Let's go this way. Let's go destroy the stuff on this place. Everything is technically connected by what's called shallow water, so I can move my bots around it, because um, I can drive through here. See? Even though they might be in the water, they're still a little bit above. This this particular type of tank can't go in like deep water, which, I mean, makes sense. It's not amphibious. Okay, so now I have a battleship. Or, yeah, the battleship, also known as the Dreadnought. It's not the one that I want to make all the time. I want to make flagships, but it's the one I'm going to have to suffer with. And this is the lightning tank. A tank that is very well suited for what I'm doing. Let's see, is there anything on top? No. Okay, perfect. So I have essentially reclaimed this area for myself. Uh, so one of these will be able to do quite a bit of damage if I get it to a base of theirs. It's, it's, it's range is quite far, it just doesn't have any underwater capability. So that part is going to be slower. I mean, as I said, I don't think they can cross this line right here, which is fantastic for me. So let's get this part right here. And just watch this. Yeah, that's what I that's what I wanted to do. Okay, so I have a second one. So let's make another six of these. Nine, let's go with nine. If I can make as much metal as I'm produced, or if I can make more metal than I'm using, um, and more energy than I'm using, that's exactly what I need to do in order to have a stable economy. 
I want these to last. Two fusion reactors are done. I want to make what's called an experimental gotch, which makes tier three class um, bots and vehicles. So with this thing, also known as the flagship, or the epoch, sorry, it's the flagship, it is the closest thing to a tier three boat you can get. There is no actual tier three boats. Okay. There's just so many resources wasted right here. I mean, on both sides. And I don't just mean my artillery barrage um, using energy or anything like that. I'm just saying the amount of carnage on both sides is huge. Oh, there we go. The red knot found something. And looks like it's no more. Oh. Yeah, so if you didn't notice, the Dreadnought is quite effective against quite a few different kinds of things. And since its range is so long, it just keeps firing. And I'm just going to try and get around and see if there's anything that they built. Yes, there is. See? That is a naval hover platform, so they're just going to try to create more and more hovercraft. I guess they see how effective mine are? I don't know. But its line of sight is shorter than its actual range, so if it doesn't have line of sight on something, it won't be able to fire on it. Which is a problem, because line of sight is also blocked by height. And since we're going up against islands, that kind of makes a difference. But if I can get over to there, to open waters, we'll be able to do something. I mean, it's got quite a bit of Look at that, damage potential. Just sailing towards those things. And he's chasing me with the little guy. I don't know how well that little guy's gonna work. Oh, there it goes. These things are what I'm afraid of. Planes will destroy this thing. Oh. Technically, so will coastal torpedo launchers. Let's just have him have fun. Do what he wants to do. Doesn't have a priority of targets. Nothing. Just have fun. Because those planes are going to destroy him. 100%. I mean, if this thing ever finishes, it's going to very nice for my side. So now another nine more. in two and to do recordings I probably will so I think right now before everything gets hectic is a good spot to sign off right now and next time we show up the flagship will be done and everything else will have a lot of other stuff so signing off for now and we will be back probably next week with another episode.